Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at GPT for all an open sourced large language model that's supposed to be like a quote unquote chat GPT that runs locally on your computer. However, it's nowhere near close chat GPT, but you can still have a little bit of fun with it. So today's just going to be a kind of representation or just kind of me showing off the tool and, um, you know, how I wrapped it with a uh, voice. It's got speech recognition and it also reads out the speech. Alrighty, so here we are. I will show how long it takes to generate on the first couple of tries. And sometimes when I say something, it doesn't even generate a response. So it'll just come back empty. And then, you know, I just have to ask it again. But here's just going to be kind of a demonstration. First, I'm going to ask it for me to generate some stories. I'm going to see if it can try to tell me about Mario and Peach. But um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and jump into it. And let's go ahead and start running. Hey there, could you tell me a story about a princess and a plumber? So this one's taking some time, it's probably going to be about 15 to 20 seconds to generate this. Hey there, could you tell me a story about a princess and a plumber? As an AI language model, I do not have personal experience or emotions. However, here's a random story that might interest you. Once upon a time in the kingdom of Hyrule, there lived a beautiful princess who was loved by all. One day, she received a message from her father saying that she must marry a prince from another kingdom. When they arrived at the prince's castle, the king said to them I have one condition, my son here can only be your future husband if he defeats you in battle. The princess was upset and scared but agreed because she felt that it. Could you tell me a story about Mario and Peach? Could you tell me a story about Mario and Peach? Who is Mario? Who is Mario Kart Tour? Mario Kart Tour. <laughs> Who is Princess Peach? Is Princess Peach a character in Super Mario Brothers? Princess Peach is a character in Super Mario Bros. Princess Peach is a character in Super Mario Brothers. In 2013, the National Museum of Play honored Princess Peach with induction into its Toy Hall of Fame. Alright, so as you can see, the generation was kind of lacking. It even got cut off on the beginning part where it started to give a story about, you know, a Hyrule princess and a battle. <laughs> so that was that was kind of interesting. That was kind of fun. Um, so let's just go ahead and try to bump up the prediction output. Let's do, um, we'll do 256 to see if we can double out the amount. And then we're just going to try to get it to ask, tell us another story and see what it comes up with that. Could you, could you give me a fantasy story about medieval life? Could you, could you give me a fantasy story about medieval life? Could you tell me a fantasy story about medieval world? Ugh, my grammar, freaking <laughs> English. What is English? Could you tell me a fantasy story about medieval world? Could you tell me a story or a fairy tale? Could you tell me a story or a fairy tale that is not in a book? Oh my goodness. Could you tell me a story that is about Princess Peach? Could you tell me a story that is about Princess Peach? What are alpacas? What are alpacas? Alpaca is a South American species of domesticated animals that originate from Peru and Chile. Alpacas were originally bred for their wool, but today they're also prized for their ability to reproduce on a smaller scale than other camelids such as llamas or camels. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and stop it there. That was kind of frustrating. It kind of just didn't generate anything, so um, that was kind of unfortunate. So it's definitely not uh, not close to ChatGPT at all. It's definitely got a lot of improvement. And I think this is probably because it's built on the 7 billion parameter one instead of the larger Facebook models. Maybe I'm, I'm messing up somewhere in the, in the generation here. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the application that comes with it. And then we'll just go ahead and ask some questions there. All right. So here we just have the application of it running. So um, let's just go ahead and um, and this is where I can type into it to ask it questions. So this one might work a little bit better. The other one was um, built for Python. So let's just go ahead and ask this. Can you tell me a story about a princess and a plumber? Okay, so this generation was actually pretty good. So um, in my limited experience with playing with this ex executable file, it's better for whatever reason than the Python implementation of it. And maybe that's because, um, I don't know, I'm actually not too sure, but the EXE version works better than the Python version of it. 
and it's not just because I'm using voice. I did try it in Python with the chat interface and it just wasn't that good. So let's just go ahead and ask it again, a different one. Let's say, what would you say is the meaning of life? Okay, so this it also answered as well. That's a philosophical question that has no definitive answer as it depends on one's personal belief and worldview. Some believe there is an afterlife or higher power to worship while others may believe their purpose in this lifetime being fulfilled through their family, career, hobbies, etc. So that is um, two for two. I think those are generally pretty good. Um, and let's just go ahead and ask it one question that it failed to in Python as well. Uh, could you give me a recipe recipe for a BLT sandwich and it says sure here's the recipe I use take two slices of bread and spread mayonnaise on one side only so it doesn't get soggy two layer lettuce tomato bacon or other savory meat between both pieces of bread with mayo in the middle or in middle if desired serve immediately okay so you know that's that's pretty basic right there um, but that is in fact a blt sandwich so 343 three on the executable version of it i am very unsure why the python version just doesn't seem to work as well um maybe it's due to some um it might be due to you have to convert it a specific way they tell you how to convert it and that could be causing an issue or maybe it's because it's in python but um, so I'm going to stop the GPT for all testing right there. Just a quick little demonstration of it. And I'm just going to run through how you can get it installed and, you know, translate it into Python if you so choose. And we'll just go ahead and jump into that real quick right now. All right. So I'm just going to blast right through this. It's going to be super quick. So, um, I'm going to have some expectation that you have some knowledge with how to work with Git and, um, stuff like that. So you've got GPT for all here. This is the repository for it. You're basically just going to do a Git clone of it. So go ahead, copy it. And then, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to do a Git clone to a, um, to any folder that you have set here. So, you know, you could just do shift open PowerShell window and then do a Git clone and then paste that to get the GPT for all folder in here. So once you're done with that inside of it, you'll have all of this stuff here which you'll now have to go and download this GPT for all Laura quantize bin file from one of these links. So um, from the top of the repository, just scroll down until you go to this direct link section, and then you're just going to um, download the direct link. It's about four gigs, so it's quite a big file. But once you have that downloaded, you go into the chat folder right here, and then or the chat folder inside of the GPT for all repository and then you're going to just paste it into here. As you can see, I have a four gigabyte file right here, um, GPT for all lower quantized, and that's just going to sit there. So, and so once you have all of that, you can actually just run the, um, you can just run GPT for all the binary file of it and run it on your computer and try it out like I had with the command line interface before. So that is super simple. That is a super simple way on how you can get GPT for all installed onto your computer. Um, and then there's another way you have to do it in order to get it installed with Python. So this is a little bit different. So um, you scroll down a little bit more until you get to the CPU interface and then official Python bindings. You click it here and then you have to do a couple of things. So um, what you're going to want to do is scroll down to the installation section here. I just skipped this one but and did this here. So um, basically you go back to your GPT for all folder here. Um, open up some type of window here and then just execute this command inside of your PowerShell window. So once you execute this, it's going to download this um, PyLama CPP. And then what you're going to do is you're going to CD into that PyLama CPP. And then you're going to do a pip install dot. And that's going to install the um, PyLama, PyLama CPP onto your computer. So Okay, once you do that, then you should be able to use the PyLama CPP model as I did in the Python script um, down below. And so if you want to take a look at my file structure um, inside of GPT for all, I actually have it outside of the GPT for all folder. And inside of here, um, I have it, you know, from PyLama.model import model. And that is how I use it in Python. There is one more thing that you do have to do. 
I think this is this might be what is causing the problems is that there are a difference in versions between the binary file and the Python version of it. And that is um, doing this conversion process. So in order to do this conversion process, you're going to need to um, you're going to need the yeah, you're going to need the path to the model. You're going to need a path to Llama tokenizer and then you're going to need a path to the uh, you know, you're just going to rename it to the converted. This is your output. And so to do that, what you have to do is scroll down over to FAQs here where to find the Llama tokenizer. Uh, go over into this issues, um, scroll down into hugging face where you see this hugging face link here. Click into it and then you're going to go to the tokenizer at the bottom. Tokenizer model, click it and then you're going to download it. So click download and then you're going to download it and then you're going to download it to the folder. So um, so what I did was I just created a folder called models outside of GPT for all entered it in named it, renamed it model and then saved this model a tokenizer model into into this um, file. So once you do that uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is now you're going to need the paths to all of those. So this one let's go back down to the bottom here so here is the line right here and so the easiest way to do this is actually just hop into a text editor and simply I would just paste it and then what I would do is I would separate each one so separate each one so that you can get the appropriate path so this is your command up here and these are the three different paths that you need to get so the easiest way to get those would be to go into the models um, I have them opened up here in VS Code, but you can find them in your file explorer. And so um, the one that you would need is this GPT for all or quantize.bin. This is the one that you downloaded and put into chat. So that's going to be this four gigabyte file that you put into chat where the binary is. And so I just copy and pasted that into that new models folder here. I know it's a waste of space, but you know, you can delete it afterwards. And so all you do is you just find the path to it. So I just copied the path and you want to get the absolute path. So here is my absolute path to that file. I don't know why it says bin V it's just bin. And so that is your model bin there. And then you want your path to the tokenizer. So the tokenizer, you copy the path and then get the path there. And then the bin, you're going to want to um, just copy the path of one of these guys. And then I would just edit what's before it and leave this as GPT for all converted bins. So this means they're all going to save into the same folder in the models folder, and they're all going to be organized in the same area. So once you have all that, you're just going to reformat them into one line. And as you can see, they're all in one line here. I just wrapped it using VS code. And then simply all you do is um, go into your GPT for all folder, go into a PowerShell window, and then you just paste that and get started. So, so yeah, the, once that is done, you're going to get a file called um, GPT for all converted bin. And that is the one that you're going to use. But yeah, that is going to be your model that you use. And it's going to be where you specify it. So in the Python code here, the model that I have specified is this models GPT for all converted bin. So um, that is what is being used here. And I think I'm doing that correct. So if I go ahead and take a look back at the um, at the FAQ here, that's what they have in this area here. GPT for all model bin. But I tried using the model bin from the one that I just downloaded and it didn't work at all. Like it, it threw some errors. So you have to do the converted one. Alrighty. And so that is going to be the GPT for all. A very quick overview and a very quick summary on how you can get it installed. The way to get it installed for Python is definitely going to be a little bit more for uh, for you coders out there. But, um, you know, if you do just want to run it as an EXE, what you can do instead is just go down to code. Uh, just click the code button on GPT for all GitHub repository. Go ahead, click download zip, download the zip, extract it. And you're going to do the same thing that I showed earlier, um, where you download this big GPT for all lower quantized bin and place it into the chat file. So 
that is going to be the exact same process if you just want to download it as a zip instead of using git clone. And with that, it's going to be the end of the video. I will post the Python code that I use in order to get the voice working with it, but it's nothing too crazy. So you do have to go through all of those steps first in order to get that in order to get it installed onto your computer. And yeah, so that's going to be today's video. If you want me to do any more um, stuff on GPT for all, I definitely can. However, I don't think I'm going to be doing too much as the performance for it for me wasn't at the level that I expect it to be yet. You know, it's getting there, but for the time being, I think I want to use my, my time for other things other than testing out all of these models that are being released because there are way too many models being released. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video and I'll see you again later in a future one. Thanks for watching.